Welcome to Tech Primers. In this video, we are going to see what is OAuth2 and why everyone is using in the internet. So if you notice Facebook or uh, Twitter apps, right? So you would have noticed that if you are using a third party application to access Facebook or Twitter, so you used to uh, um, get a notification saying, do you want to authorize this particular application? So that is all done using OAuth2. So let's see what is this OAuth2 and how is it helping um, Facebook, Twitter and other uh, uh, tech giants in accessing our information from some other source, right? So what is this OAuth2 basically? So OAuth is basically an open standard for access delegation. So it is not for authentication only, it is for access delegation. So basically you delegate your uh, uh, authority to somebody else, right? So that is what uh, OAuth uh, does in general. So it is not an authentication um, protocol or uh, something like that. It is an uh, authorization standard. Okay, so OAuth also provides um, the secure delegated access as I said earlier. So instead of, um, so let's say you have a, a Google account. Okay, however you are accessing um, uh, a bank statement or something like that, let's say, right? So and the bank statement asks uh, you to provide a Google account and you get redirected to the Google page and from there uh, Google asks you whether you want to authorize your bank to redirect or give information about you to the bank so that is the uh, that is what happens in OAuth2 so literally the bank won't have your username and password from Google so instead it will just uh, delegate the uh, URL or the request to Google and Google will author authenticate you and then Google will ask you what all accesses do you need to give to the bank so basically the authorization information is received from Google to the bank and the bank then uses that to for any further communication okay so that is what happens in OAuth2 so OAuth2 is more of a framework than a protocol so as I said earlier right so it, it, it is just a delegated uh, a delegating it's just dedicating your access uh, to a third party application from the uh, source authentic authentication server so OAuth2 is just a framework uh, than a protocol okay let's see that with an example right so let's say you have a client and server so uh, let's take this particular example which i was discussing right so let's say you log into your uh, bank account uh, let's take uh, citibank for example right so you log into your citibank account uh, for some reason citibank is asking you to authenticate uh, your facebook account let's say right so imagine citibank um, server as the authentication client and uh, city and the uh, facebook uh, server as the authentication server okay so literally you have logged into your uh, uh, Citibank uh, banking website okay from there it is asking you to connect to the Facebook uh, account okay so what happens is you log into the uh, Facebook account so when you when you trigger that request to log into the Facebook account what happens is a request goes from the client to the server so basically a request goes from Citibank to Facebook saying that okay can you please authorize this particular client okay uh, I want to authorize this particular client and my client ID is that client whatever and then redirect me to the URL that client.com slash accept so imagine that Citibank is sending this particular request to the uh, Facebook server now what happens is Facebook will now pop you up with a screen saying do you want to authorize Citibank and it will show you the list of uh, details which you want to uh, authorize so uh, so basically uh, you can give your name um, email address or phone number and stuff like that so that is what Facebook asks you so Facebook literally asks you and you can control what uh, authorization you can give to the Citibank account so you are not giving the username and password to the Citibank account however you are delegating your um, so, so literally Facebook is delegating your authorization to Citibank via your authorization so you are saying that okay I am authorizing uh, Facebook to give me uh, give access to Citibank for all these stuff okay so that is what is happening here so once you say authorize uh, the URL will be now redirected to Citibank website so that is why you have to give the redirect URL you yeah, are saying that okay it gets redirected so what will Citibank receive now is Citibank will now receive a token so basically an access to authorization token so basically now Citibank got a, um, uh, privileges to request now for for the further request okay so now you gave access for Citibank to access your Facebook account so what happens in the next case right so let's say now 
your first request is succeeded immediately Citibank requests same Facebook server with that particular token and asks for a access token so basically uh, Citibank is, uh, has to now identify um, uh, basically it has to authenticate itself right so previously it received a, a authorization token for us now Citibank has to authenticate itself so what happens is Citibank will now send uh, the client ID and the client secret so be these two uh, informations are nothing but uh, registered informations of Citibank with Facebook so Facebook would have already got the got and generated a client ID and client secret for Citibank so Citibank has to now uh, authenticate itself right so what if some other server is faking like a Citibank server right so that is why Citibank has to now uh, give its own secret and its own client ID along with that it has to pass our token whatever token got generated whatever authorization code which we generated in the previous step so it has to send that again to Facebook now Facebook what it will do it will now send the something called an access token so access token is something which is valid for a particular user only for a particular uh, period of time so uh, so if you notice here um, let's say I had uh, my name is Peter okay so Peter has requested uh, Facebook uh, authorization and it has uh, and Peter has delegated all the authorization permissions to Citibank and Citibank has now gone to Facebook using its own authentication and authorization details along with uh, the token with which uh, Peter got authenticated and then finally an access token is generated with a particular period of time so this ac access token has a timeout of let's say uh, it depends on the implementation so that is why OAuth is a framework so some people implement it for one hour so or uh, some people implement it for half an hour or something like that so this ac access token will be valid for a uh, stipulated period of time okay now what will we do with the access token so Citibank has now authenticated uh, your details and Citibank has authenticated itself as well with Facebook now Citibank has got all your uh, access privileges right so next what we can do with that is so now Citibank can now directly uh, use that and then let's say you are going to retrieve your account details okay so with that access token it is going to retrieve your account details uh, from Facebook let's say right so that is what happens so now uh, Citibank will now use this access token for every request you give to access your details inside Facebook so that is what happens so in, in generally consider this as accounts or uh, you can you can consider it as account information or your profile information basically so now Citibank has access to access your profile information using this access token because you are already authorized and authenticated it okay so this these steps are uh, called authentication server and this is called the uh, resource server so basically uh, this is nothing but a resource right a rest uh, URL so once you have authenticated that is when you will have access to your resource servers so if you don't have access uh, token you cannot access this particular resource so basically internally OAuth as a framework how it is split is uh, you have a resource server and you have a authentication authorization server so authorization server is what you have we have done here and resource server is where it uses the token which you generated using the authorization server and that is how it allows you so in general OAuth 2 has different implementations uh, so Facebook has a different way of implementing it Twitter has a similar way so uh, that you can you write your own implementation it is not necessary for you to write in the same way but uh, the general concept is you will have an authorization server and you will have a resource server so once you authorize your application that is when you will be able to access your resource and and this happens only when you want to delegate your uh, authorize author, authority to somebody else so if you have a server and the client architecture you don't have to go for OAuth 2 OAuth 2 is necessarily used only when uh, let's say you have a third party coming in picture and you want to delegate your author uh, um, access from one place to another so that is when you have you can use OAuth 2 so if, if you are working in an organization right typically imagine that uh, as an uh, as something like uh, let's say you have your uh, portal your um, uh, employee portal right so you have uh, your information there so all your information is all stacked there and let's say uh, there is a team which is writing an application to access your details so let's say your HR uh, team is uh, writing an application to access some details um, they will have full access however uh, let's say there is some other application uh, an inbuilt application or a application built inside your uh, firm by somebody else so in that case he will have to request you whether you are ready to give your 
details to that application so that is when oauth can be used so you can so literally you are um, uh, delegating your access for that particular third party application developed inside the firm to access your hr records or something like that so that is when uh, oauth2 will be uh, useful because you are not using your username and password and you are getting you are giving it right so you, in, in general you will have a kerberos or uh, you have your uh, username and password right so you don't have to give that to your application so that to that third party application or the inbuilt application uh, uh, internal application instead you just authorize using an authentication server um, uh, authorization server delegating saying okay this guy can use my information uh, these are the informations and I, and I authorize that so that is when uh, we will use oauth2 so um, hopefully you understood what is oauth2 uh, in the future videos we will see uh, how to use oauth2 inside spring security so that's it for this particular video if you have any queries or concerns about oauth2 just uh, post that in the comments below i will uh, try to reply uh, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe um, meet you again in the next video thank you